All right, we're going to start now in five, four, three, two, one. Awesome. Well, Gary and Rebecca, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm thrilled to have the first instructor team on as a podcast host. How are you doing today? Doing well. Awesome. Yeah, doing great, Sean. All right. Well, as uh, if you've listened before, we'd like to jump into our podcast with hearing your favorite hot drink, your hot, favorite hot drink in the field, your go-to on the hard days. What, what, what do you have, Rebecca? Um, I'm a morning coffee and then a, depends on the, how the day went, but maybe an afternoon hot cocoa or a, a nice Earl Grey tea. All right. So, so not necessarily a go-to, but uh, you mix it up a bit. Yeah. All right. Do you, do you carry your own stash? Did you ever carry your own stash of Earl Grey? Uh, yeah. yeah. On occasion. Yep. <laughs> they can run out pretty quick. Yeah. How, how about you, Gary? Favorite hot drink go-to in the field? Uh, coffee. Yeah. Uh, morning, noon, and night. <laughs> I kind of remember you yeah. with the, always having a coffee mug kicking around. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You, you got a favorite mug? Um, I think I used to have one of those, there was like a kind of classic, um, like plastic mug and you like tie a string around the handle and drill it through the lid. Like everybody had one. Totally and, forgot um, about those. There were, I think for like probably drink out of it. Who knows how much plastic we ingested after a decade of using that, but I had a couple yeah. of those forever. Yeah. Yeah. I, for a long time, I had that like baby Nalgene bottle that, you know, still had all those chemicals in it with, you know, boiling water and cocoa constantly. Oh yeah. <laughs> wrapped with a nice plastic uh insulate pad <laughs> well seasoned yeah you know it reminds me of the the string on the lid so we wouldn't lose that for a long time i actually had a string and i taped my spoon to my bowl <laughs> yeah oh because i I've spent seen that, yeah. way too much time digging in food bags looking for my spoon <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah you know and it all comes around now i got kids and sippy cups and uh you know i was just thinking the other day like basically adult coffee mugs are just like sippy cups for adults yeah exactly. same thing like i'm, I'm trying yeah. to get my three-year-old to stop using the sippy cup but i'm like here i am like walking around town with a coffee mug well, like exactly. why not they're just doing what we do yeah That's it. it all comes around all right. Well, let's, uh, we got a couple of funny stories, fun stories, two courses. Uh, Gary was on his first and his last he talks about, I mentioned earlier, and um, Rebecca was fortunate enough to be there. They weren't your first and last course, were they, Rebecca, these two stories that we're going to jump no, into? No, okay. I don't know. They weren't. Okay, good. Good. So they were, they were experiences that didn't just turn you off of Knowles like it did Gary. No, not at all. <laughs> no, I don't think that was what uh, put him over the edge. We'll find out. But uh, let's jump into it. We got uh, a shorter one and a longer one. Let's jump into it. One yeah, you titled the low water on the Yampa. Who wants to yeah, who wants to start that? I could, I could maybe frame it from my perspective. I'd, I'd love to hear Rebecca's uh, probably for accuracy more than anything else. But um, the I think uh, it was my first course and it was um, we'd worked uh, you know, did my IC, the river IC was in April or sometime in the spring. And, and then there wasn't any work. So left, went to California and did some boating and then got called back in. And um, it was myself and uh, Pat Carney who had done my oh, IC yeah. with. And um, it was our first course and uh, there was no water. I mean, there was, uh, you know, it was a canoe course. And I think there okay. was like five CFS flowing out of the Yampa, which is a, you know, free flowing river. It's not dam controlled. And that's in and, Utah, um, right? The Yampa? I never yeah. paddled it. Okay. And you're running and out of the, the Vernal. Yeah, out of yeah, Vernal. Out of and and um, I just remember somehow it was almost like we were like, oh, this will be, this will work. You know, this will go. Yeah. It's canoeing. It'll you go. don't need much water. It'll yeah. be fine. So w and, when did you, when did you realize there was no water? Like you're briefing, you hear the water's low or did you like, what was, what was your feeling like when well, you showed up to the, to the river at the, for the first time and saw it? Well, we ran Desolation Canyon first. Okay. So we had been raft kayaking and there was oh, okay. plenty of water because that section of the green is dam controlled. And then hmm. you do a second little section on these summer courses or you did, I don't know what they do now. Um, so usually you go to Lador, which is also dam controlled in Dinosaur National Monument. And that's super fun, beautiful. But I think they had done a Yampa canoe section a little bit earlier in the summer and had raved about it. You know, it was beautiful. It was great canoeing. The students had an awesome time. So it seemed like, oh, well, let's try and do that. Like, um, 
and we got to Deer Lodge, which is the put in. And and usually you the Yampa is free flowing, one of the last free flowing rivers. Mm. Um, and you do it on your river IC, and usually it's sort of a raging torrent, you know, big brown, muddy, uh, just you hear spring. it when you're sleeping. And we got there and it was significantly lower. But there was enough water at the put-in to like float canoes. And I remember we kind of, you kind of drop into the first little bit of the canyon and, and it was like, uh-oh, like there's not a lot of water down here. Like this, this may, this may be a long five days. Yeah. And it was kind of, I think it was that, um, there was just enough water to put in to kind of suck you in. You're like, literally yeah. like it's two canoes wide. Really? That's it. Two canoes wide. It was. Oh yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it was pretty narrow and, but you're like, you know, yeah, it can go it can work. and you know, it's maybe it's like a foot deep or a foot and a half. And you're like, this will, I mean, yeah. And, and this, um, this, this is not like Alaska Yukon rivers where it might've been a braid of a river and no. you know, you're, you know, the big one's coming. This, this yeah. is a Canyon. So this is the only channel. Yeah. I, re I remember we had like made sure the boats were light. We were like, yeah, get rid of all this extra stuff. No, like no library, you know, like none of that, the, the extras you take on river trips because you're floating and you don't have to carry it. It was like, why were okay, you getting rid of it? Cause we knew it was going to be low water. So you just wanted to be light. Yeah. Okay. So we had kind of thought about it, but huh. I've never heard of a canoe trip wanting to go light for the, the buoyancy of the boat. Like I, there's I light reasons for other light trips, whether you're, you're portaging or whatever, but for the depth of the water, I've never heard of a packing light. Nice. Okay. So you're, so you're leaving some of the extracurriculars behind. Yes. Oh yeah. Like you don't need any clothes. Like I remember yeah. going through the students' bags. It was like, no, you just need a pair of shoes and some shorts and yeah. shirt and you're It'll good. Be fine. You know? Good. Yeah. Like y'all are gonna share. I think we they might even share dry bags. I could be making that up. But it was well, like that, that might have happened. I can't remember, but that might have happened. I can't remember. Yeah. But uh I do remember like I feel like when it, we realized that how bad it was gonna be. Cause <laughs> You kind of, I feel like it was just around the corner from the put in. Like it just so. started to like kind of the canyon started to form itself up. And um, we were like, oh, wow. Like we have to get out now. Oh my. Like hmm. this is a, hmm, hmm. we'll hop out and we'll just talk. And so you would kind of like pass the canoes to the next braid of water and um, to get going. And it still kind of sucked us in, but I feel like it was like day, but like in the afternoon of day one, into day one, we were like, I just remember looked at, looking at Rebecca. I think it was, may have been the next day, but we all started to get this sense of how bad it was that nobody thought of turning around. Like it would have been about the same travel speed either way, going upstream or downstream. But um, maybe it was day two. I looked and Rebecca just looked at me and just goes like, Gary, I'm losing my mind. Like, oh, no. I've, I've lost my mind. Cause like you literally you'd stop and you'd look upstream and you didn't see any water. All you saw was boulders of the no riverbed. Way. Yeah. And then you look downstream and all you saw were the boulders of the riverbed. So are you dragging and, um, the boat at this point? It's just catching on every rock in the in the river? Yeah. Or you know, you're sort of like trying to find the little pools of water where you can yeah. float a little bit. And then are, are you walking out, the canoes at this point? Oh yeah. A lot of it. <laughs> oh yeah. And there's no um you know, I haven't been on this river, there's no tributaries downstream or there's no forks that you're gonna meet up with like there's no prospect for water. This is well, like as good as Eventually gift. you meet up with the green okay. where it comes out of the Lador and, and we, you would have water there, but it was sort of, you know, every day I think we reevaluated. It was sort of like, well, you know, how far do you think we can get today? You know, usually, you know, a, a good day on the river is like, if there's not a lot of white water and scouting, you're like, oh, we can do 10 miles. And then it was like, ooh, can we do five miles? Oh no. Ooh, do you think we can make it three miles? Oh it, wow. Yeah. There was a lot of mental gymnastics, I think, going on. So what are the students thinking at this point? Did you prep them that it might be low water? Or are they kind of into this going like, is this is this normal paddling course? I guess they'd already done a couple of rivers before this. Yeah, they had done, I mean, we had done Desolation Canyon in rafts. Yeah. And, yeah. 
I know it's funny. I can't recall what the students were thinking at that time. I think yeah. they were probably just like just massive supper festing. Like, yeah. you know, like we we're just trying to like make sure like nobody breaks a leg or cause you're walking on these loose boulders. And, and then um, I feel like there was, uh, I remember these two students, one I feel like was from, uh, I believe he was French and he was oh, an exchange yeah. student and he, it, and he had come to see mountains. Like somehow in the uh, admissions process, he had like told somebody like his parents, like, I want to go where there's mountains. And somehow he ended up in Vernal on this <laughs> river course. And so he's hoping to see like mountains, big trees, like wind rivers probably. Right. And um, he ended up in Vernal on a course with no water. And I feel like the whole time he was just like, what is going on? Why am I here? And he had this kid, Oh my gosh, I remember his name, Adam. And, oh, uh, the his tang. Name was Adam. And the tang stain. And he was just his thing, Adam's thing was like how much tang, you know, he sought refuge in the comfort of tang. And so he was just <laughs> going to see how much he could drink. And he just had constant tang stains. And so I remember this image of this pair, and they were physically very different. One was a really big person, and one wasn't. And, um, and so I remember. Uh, the young guy from France was like on the front of the canoe and he's like dragging as hard as he can trying to get it like, you know, sometimes you get it up over a rock and he's just pulling on it. And the guy in the back, Adam, the, the tank stain is just exhausted and just all like 250 pounds of him like pushing down on the back of the canoe, like using it as like a brace. So he doesn't oh, no fall over. Yeah. So I think that was pretty like indicative of the whole trip. Like that's our Ford speed, you know, Wow. Was what, so funny. Was there ever an op option to like, okay, we're just going to walk this river and we're going to portage it, like just put canoes on our head and start walking? Not really. Cause you it probably would not, have been safer to just walk the yeah, canoes. And there's just not much, you know, you're fully in a big Canyon there, right. you know, sometimes there's yeah. just nowhere to rock on that, on the yeah. side. And you're, and, you're uh, oh, go ahead. Beth. You go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and it's just a riverbed. Like there's, yeah, right. we're like below grade. So like the riverbanks are in some cases are above us. I'm, so I'm kind of remembering this now, but like yeah. we get in the shade and we were in the cut bank, like, like an undercut, like riverside, you know, like it was crazy. It was like, we were at the bottom of the river. You probably saw some down. neat geology. <laughs> well, and it was yeah. definitely like, oh, we're, you know, here we are at, this big rapid that normally is like got huge or raft potential flipping waves in it. And you're like, Oh, that's the rock that creates that hole, you know, oh, like, wow. Oh, this is kind of cool. Sort of. Yeah. I'm sure you had that visual probably knowing, you know, white water and probably been down there with higher water, but it's gotta be hard to explain that to a student be like, no, okay, so this is what it looks cool. like when the water's <laughs> 10 feet higher. <laughs> they didn't buy that one. No. No. Did you remember Rebecca what the what the students were like, or were they just kind of uh, going I, with the flow? Um, I do remember taping some ankles. Um, oh, yeah. I, I do remember this the student Gary is talking about now. Uh, I think they were just sort of like dumbfounded, especially coming from Desolation, where it was mm. we're living big. You know, we got this big group kitchen. Um, I think Adam. You know, we had these big containers of drink mix so adam had free reign of uh you know a, a, <laughs> a gallon of powdered tang um and and now we're just sort of in this like mission of how far can we get down this river and what are the options to get picked up on time you know it started to be, become very clear that like we needed to get to somewhere where we could get picked up right. um and that was not going to be easy that yeah it's hard it's not you know you're in a canyon there it's not like there's there's yeah. an easy out we're going to just hike over the woods here and, and find a road or there's there's, there's nothing hey mm -mm. and uh, you yeah. know in other rivers where i've had challenges of getting out in time usually it's like oh let's send a speedboat up and you know that'll take us all down or in alaska we had a plane come in and pick up a group of students but yeah you got none of those options here nope so so what did you do well uh I mean, initially we were like, oh, we can make it to the point where 
like it became clear we weren't going to make takeout. And then there's a place called Echo Park, which is where the green and the Yampa come together. And there's a road in there. We knew that. We were like, oh, maybe we can get to Echo Park. And then it became clear, like, we're not going to make it to Echo Park. Oh, no. So there's one more in holding upstream. I can't remember. Do you remember the name, Gary? I can't remember the name of that ranch. Yeah, that's um, all I remember. It was a ranch. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was sort of like, okay, maybe we can make it to here. And I'm confident they were scrambling at the at the base to so figure you were, out. You were in touch with the base and letting them know yeah. your situation? Fortunately, we had a sat phone, I think, which was pretty new like yeah right around those times that year was like maybe the first year there were sat phones um and we ended up like the the base ended up like figuring out how to contact this ranch and get permission to come in and take us out and it was like an you know a pretty epic drive out oh yeah Um, yeah like we were way out there so you did make it down as far as this ranch yeah but it wasn't i mean i I don't remember how many miles we ended up going, but it's not that far. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> Maybe like 25 in four or five days or something like that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Was, Do you think you did more yeah. miles walking or more paddling? Oh, walking. I think walking for sure. That's yeah. canoe hiking. That's what yeah. we called it. Canoe, hiking. canoe, canoe hiking. assisted hiking or something. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is. I think what I remember too is um, at, at some part, you know, like so three, like a couple things. Like one, um, again, this is my first course. So I felt like right. I just spent the whole time like goofing off with Pat Carney. And it's like it's a pretty accurate statement. Like we would just kind of like bird dog. Uh, I can't remember his name, but the student from France and Adam and just be there to assist like with their. And so we spent the whole time imagining what the French student was thinking, but not saying <laughs> about the situation. And that, that got us like just laughing for days, like just adding captions to that experience. But, um, and I think too, there were some of us too were like, I can't believe like almost like that field instructor indignant of like, this is not right. Like there's no water. <laughs> I am a canoeing instructor. Like how can I teach the board stroke? And, um, but really what I remember is, um, <clears throat> Jeff, the course leader, uh, Jeff Humple yeah. right, gave this really amazing course closing, um, like really powerful, you know, like the night before you get picked up at the ranch. And, um, it was kind of a classic where I, I did it for a long time, but you'd have, uh, somebody lays down on a pocket pad and everybody just picks the students up and like this one person. So it's like all hands are on this one person mm. and they're kind of elevated almost like stiff as a board, light as a feather kind of thing. And they're elevated, but they're above everybody's head. And all they see is like the sky above them. So just the desert sky. And you just say one thing you appreciate about that person and or something you appreciate about having them on this experience. And um, I do remember that. And the students were just like blown away. You know, it was like Jess pulled out her like, like, okay, I need the big closer for this, (laughs) you know. Something memorable. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it ended up being like a really like, how do you deal with adversity kind of like conversation? Like, so it's kind of interesting because we had that side of it in my head, like, yeah, this was a real, like, how are you going to react to this situation? Kind of like tolerance thing. But then the other side of it was like, there was no water. You know, like there was like, that was crazy. You know, did you at any point, Rebecca, thinking about turn around and, and say like, let's just walk back upstream. Not really, because it was all, I, I guess I was always in the like, maybe when we get to X destination, you know, X point, it'll, it'll pool up a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, and it will be able to paddle some of this, you know, just looking at mm-hmm. the map and thinking, oh, this is a big drop. Maybe it'll pool up before this big drop. Right. Um, so there was always this like. The optimism. <laughs> the optimism that carries you off the edge of the cliff type thing. Right. Or down the dry river bed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you guys in your paddling career after that ever come across anything quite quite as dry as that? No, I did not. I don't think yeah. so. Uh, uh-uh. uh. They probably yeah. didn't go back to that. Had they used had Knowles used that that river at that time of year before? Was this a new new section uh, added? Not or? that late in the season. Okay. Like they had done it. Yeah. They had done it earlier in the season, 
um, kind of at the tail end of the runoff and it had been really successful. Like it had right. been a really positive course, really fun. Um, but I don't think it, they ever went back that late. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's world-class. It's, it's, it's a world-class canyon and right. it's a beautiful river. Just needs water. Yeah. yeah. Did you? I feel like we made a lot of jokes for a long time about um, paint. Like we'd there'd be the canoes would be up in the you know loft at Vernal and be like, oh yeah, see all that paint's gone. I know <laughs> oh yeah, don't need some of paint. The right there. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I remember uh, back when I was growing up in the Scouts in Newfoundland, we did a, a low water river and we had those Grumman canoes. You ever paddle those metal Grumman canoes? And those things are like tape on rocks. Like they just stick to ever there's no sliding on those and i remember just dragging one of the one of the trips we did on those just dragging over pebbles for days but uh nothing like this did you guys ever go back and and paddle the ampa after this yeah in, oh, in yeah. regular water yeah and oh, yeah. did you did you have a hard time explaining what your previous experience was like to to current students trips on students on that trip with the full water uh i think i blocked that experience out for a while <laughs> <laughs> right on yeah I think it's just like, yeah, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's like <laughs> going to the beach and saying there's no ocean. Or yeah. I don't know. I can't imagine. Yeah. That. Can't even relate. Do you guys have any pictures yeah. from that trip? Do you think you can dig out? I don't. I don't. You blocked, I don't. It, blocked uh, that out too. Yeah. <laughs> right on. I, I just remember sitting one evening and being like, like there, one of the canoes was kind of tied up. And I was like, if that water gets any lower away from that canoe, I'm going to totally lose it. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember that. I remember. And I feel like, oh, my gosh. I feel like, yeah, I feel like because, again, like, this is, like, my first course. And um, it, it's funny because, like, for me, I don't know. Like, I came out of my IC thinking, like, I knew what was what. Like, I thought I was, like, pretty hot stuff and knew a lot about a lot of different things. And so then landing on this course where there's no water, I feel like I was yeah. probably looking at Rebecca, like, so. Is this how it always is? What do you think yeah. about this? Yeah. What do you, did you do this last year? Right. You know, and I do remember Rebecca looking at that canoe going like, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I think this was like a summer I worked like seven courses in Vernal yeah. back to back to back. And, and every course had some sort of big learning point. You know, we did a helicopter evac on one. Oh, no. Like at the end of the summer, I did my first CL and, um, and this, you know, there were some good learning points on this one. Yeah. And I think one thing I, that course, Jess Humple, um, who I think oh, her, yes. she's married now. She did mm -hmm. a really amazing job just corralling a bunch of new instructors. Cause I did my C the year before Gary did his. So I was pretty new instructor too. Um, and she did, she did a really amazing job. And I really took a lot away from her course leading Mm. um yeah. and she managed a pretty pretty uh crazy situation very well yeah it's yeah. amazing how what, what what can happen when we put on a brave face and, and carry on as if things are normal <laughs> yeah well, it's fine we'll just walk yeah and, and she just she handled it so well like yeah. she wasn't you know i mean she was just super chill like yeah we'll get as far as we get and we'll try and get there and we'll work hard and take care of ourselves and just like brought it down to like what are our most important things yeah and like and i think like role modeling like this is how we handle it you know mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit, yeah i remember that because i think i was probably like but i was gonna teach the ford stroke like, oh. <laughs> you know like that's like my scope of right. like yeah. all right this is my first course i just want to do a good lesson or something like that and yeah. jess was just so chill yeah <laughs> that was awesome yeah, we're so eager on our first courses to to highlight, you know. I taught this class on my IC and I've been waiting to teach it on my first course. <laughs> it's so good now. It's so yeah, good. Right. I've got some good feedback I'll on draw. it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, I, I got to step up and grab something for a minute, but um, you guys talk for a minute. I'll be right back and we'll jump into your next story. Sound Great. Good? All right. Sounds good. Yeah. You're so fancy with your background, Gary. Oh yeah. It's been like the, the year of zoom meetings for me. Oh so man. I, we just do all with this stuff all the time. Let's see what else I got. Let's see. Do you have uh, students up there? Do you have like semester yeah. students? Up? 
Oh, that's Dallin. a good one. Yeah. Click that one. Um, yeah, we do. So we, we COVID rolled around in, uh, last year and we went all online with classes. So no K-12 programming, but okay. grad students still here. Oh, good. And um, we just finished out the season. And then this fall, uh, nobody's doing field trips. So what happened was that our local school district went on a hybrid schedule. So half the students, half the week. And we offered programming locally to kids on the days they weren't in the school. Oh, cool. So we ran this like hybrid model with the local school district and we've done it all year. And nice. Kind of is really, it was super cool. Like uh, the team here put a lot of work into figuring it out. But, um, you know, we had grad students, we like, you know, or actually have somebody to teach, parents locally. Um, their kids can go to five days a week of programming. So like people can work if they have to work. And we had about $50,000 in scholarships. We were able to put oh, towards wow. it. Cool. So, yeah, it's kind of it's a crazy year. Like it's a good year yeah. to be in risk management. You know? Yeah. Sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I love it, Gary. I appreciate the, the background switching with the story. This is, a, this is right. high quality video um, podcast recording we got going here. That That's a nice dedication. What are, you, what are you doing in the photo? Is that? Well, that's me cooking, I think, on our, once you get, you know, when you get oh, to the bottom of raft that. raft going on there. Yukon rivers, you you're hit the flat water. So you, you know, Jeff Cardi style, build a raft and, um, that's a serious raft. We didn't mess around. <laughs> that is awesome. I've never seen anything like that. that was, I think that was popcorn. We were, like, <laughs> we were, being, we were gonna have popcorn. I was like, all right. All Mostly right. it's it's my ploy to get other people to paddle flat water, I think. <laughs> <laughs> While I work on my uh, chefing skills here. That's right. I'll feed you. You can paddle me. Right. Yeah. Okay, well let's ju let's jump into the next story. This takes uh, takes place up in the Yukon on the mighty Hess River. Uh, I paddled in the Yukon. I haven't paddled the Hess, but I've heard lots of good stories about it. Um, who wants to set up this one? Rebecca, you want to set Rebecca this one? Rebecca should. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so this is uh, early season. Uh, I think June. Um, and this was a Naval Academy course. So we had oh, yeah. um, a group of midshipmen coming up, ready for adventure and challenge. Um, so the traditional route for Knowles is to drag up, um, I can't remember what the Creek's called, but drag yep. up the Creek. And Jeff Creek. Jeff Creek. Right. And then you hop on a tributary, you know, go through the beaver ponds, hop on a tributary and then down into the Hess. Um, and the, the dragging up, Gary and I are very experienced at dragging canoes. <laughs> so we, we, we did that quite well. Um, yeah. and then did you guys it, ever, uh, at the beginning when you're starting doing the drag, like, you know, that's going to happen, but obviously in the Utah, of course, you didn't know that was going to happen. Did you ever like have flashbacks to, to each other? I don't, I don't think we ever made that connection before. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. I think I don't this is so it, different. Like, bring it up. So I think, well, to be honest, too, like this was like 10 years later, right. yeah. maybe. And so I, it, so we'd already talked about the Yamp quite a bit. Right. You know what I mean? It was like every time I'd see Rebecca, I'd be like, oh, I remember this. <laughs> like, you know, people would be like, we, they'd see us chatting or be like, were you on that course where they drag the canoes? You know, so it was kind of, you might have already worn that one out. Yeah. Right, right. All right. So here you are dragging upstream. Yeah, we drag upstream successfully. And then the tributary you, you hop on, um, that was pretty sporty, as I recall. Um, and yeah, it was, it was marvelous creek. Oh, um, yeah. How, how are you? I, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right, but I was like, marvelous. Yeah. And I think we had, I think our co-instructor pinned briefly in there. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that, um, oh, Jeff yeah. was that Cardi? No, it was oh. Jeff Coy. Okay. Who is an excellent canoer. Yeah. Is, oh, it yeah. was not his his uh, lack of skill that led to that. Um, but it was it was pushy and it was super sporty. Yeah. It was, like, it was crazy. It was super sporty. It was like um, I saw some, I've got some old photos, but it's like the you know, swollen, bank high. Oh yeah. Really Flood narrow, road. like tree in the river, like go around it. 
like just kind of getting started. And I remember, um, I'm sorry, Rebecca, it's like I'm interrupting, but the, no. the students were like, so, like all they've done is drag canoes. <laughs> and now you they're know, supposed to learn on this tight, fast flowing tributary. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like classic spring whitewater where it's like, well, it'll get a lot easier when you're done. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, right. you know. Hang on. Yeah, and I think 40. with the with the with the midshipmen from the Naval Academy, they're they're very gung ho and mm. have no like I'm in the military, I need to push my limits, I need to like, you know, what is risk management? What are you talking about? Like, right. of course we can do this. Um, which can work to your advantage sometimes, but also is a bit extra to manage of yeah. like, we need to rein these people in. Were you able to do much teaching at all in those first couple of days on this sporty tributary? I don't recall. No, it was like teaching. stay to the inside. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like Frogger, you right. know, it's like, just keep your, your canoes a log. We just right. want you to keep your log and like the inside of each turn. Yeah. Wow. And don't hit the trees like yeah yeah see <laughs> tree and water move away best you can absolutely yeah it's, yeah it's pretty interesting so you're in survival mode for the first few days a little bit yeah. kind of and trying to i feel like we did a pretty good job like we were trying to like we didn't like we wouldn't go like paddle for like four hours you know it was like all right we're gonna do this hundred yards and then we're gonna like regroup Oh yeah. And wow. I remember like just kind of chunking it out and like little just you know, just trying to manage it. And um when Jeff, I do remember when Jeff uh his boat got pinned, um instead of setting a Z drag to get it out, we just did a straight haul. We just gave the line to the midshipmen and we're like, I, I bet you can't it. haul that boat out. And they're like, Yeah, nah, of course we <laughs> no can. <one. laughs> yeah, and they were like, There's this photo I've got, and they're just like, ah. like they got it off? Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, no problem. Wow. Yeah. So we made it through that fairly unscathed. Like, and we were, I think we were feeling pretty good. And you get to the Hess and you're just like, oh, you know, like <laughs> right. this is wide open. This is way easier to manage. You know, um, we can teach now. We can camp mm. on gravel bars and um, yeah. really wow. show them how to like cook on fire and um, really get into kind of, a little bit more of a true like not just survival mode right. and then so we were doing pretty well and then we got to this like none of us had been on the Hess before oh, okay um so this is all like we're scouting as we go and you know looking at the map and saying okay well there's some marked rapids there but none of us knew what was around the corner right. and uh mm -hmm. I don't I don't think anybody had you know i'd heard about the hess and knew it was like oh everybody likes the hess it's fun right. um and there's a fair bit of beta from past courses yeah down there i don't i didn't particularly study but um, right it was there if you wanted to it was available <laughs> <laughs> and then we got to one section we had been doing well and uh we we decided okay this is a good like eddy line we can clinic here, we can get their skills going. Cause we, we had hit some, you know, little class one stuff, but we knew there was bigger stuff downstream. So we were like, okay, we need to, we need to get these guys really with their whitewater skills, get going, not just point it downstream Creek boating. Mm -hmm. So we started clinicking and, uh, and jump in anytime Gary, but Jeff and I got in a boat to kind of model and set safety. Um, our, our other co-instructor and, and we didn't really know what was downstream, which was perhaps the biggest flaw <laughs> in this plan. Um, and sure. so the students were doing pretty well and uh, you know, they were decent boaters. They had done been in boats a lot at this point. Um, and then a boat boat flipped and we were mm. like, okay. Um, and we thought we could On get a challenging in. section or kind no, of unexpectedly. just where we were clinicking. Oh, we were okay. clinicking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's not on her the, to flip it when you're clean. The, the, yeah, it was the, the upstream ferry. Yeah. It was like upstream ferry. I guarantee if you say that word to these baby students, like 
that his midshipmen now they'll, they'll like flinch a little bit. They're like, <laughs> upstream ferry is going to get you. And, um, but yeah, so I was on the shoreline kind of talking with the idea we had was like, uh, Jeff and Rebecca are doing safety and modeling technique and strokes. And I was there kind of narrating, just verbalizing, like, all right, this is what they're doing. This is why they're both at this angle. So I'm on the shore and we're just kind of chatting it through. And Jeff and Rebecca have set safety. And uh, I, I think it was like the first boat, or maybe it was like the second. I feel like like our clinic had just started in some yeah. ways. And um, the, the boat ferries out and uh, the students lean the wrong way, maybe grab a gunnel, but they take water over the upstream edge and just boom, they get swamped. And they go down and they just start swimming for sure. Jeff and Rebecca go after the boat. And um, I see them chasing it and it's, you chase it for a while. Like why, mm -hmm. why don't you describe the chase and I'll, I'll show what I well, saw. Do they, do they have their paddles or are their paddles gone too? No, they had their stuff. I think they had oh, yeah. their paddles. They, had, they held onto yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so our lack of knowledge kind of uh, bit us in the butt a little bit because this was just like the first entrance rapid to a fairly continuous section, which we oh, did yeah. not realize. <laughs> um, so Jeff, who um, Jeff and I were just chasing this boat and we started like just reading and running all of this like class two, class oh, almost wait. three, whitewater chasing this boat. Oh, no. And and it just became like, oh, shit. This is oh. like, we're getting way down there, Jeff. Like, and we would almost get it. And like, you know, you often with these Yukon courses, you set up like a big long throw bag on the stern of the boat so that you can tow or you can grab the, mm. the throw bag and, and paddle the throw bag to shore right. and then pendulum the boat in we you know we had the throw bag like we we're so close to shore and then there you know there'd just not be quite a big enough eddy to get us in uh. and they'd be like okay jeff we gotta we can't we can't make this like let's keep going and and we ended up running i don't know how far down we were gary from you guys at that point oh, but we got this boat to shore on an island at the end of this whitewater section oh, wow. and it became very apparent very quickly that we were a long way from gary and the entire yeah. course at this point with nothing no gear well we had i think we were in jeff's boat like i had gotten into jeff's boat because he we both had been paddling with students so i had my day bag okay. i think and he had his stuff and i had we had another student's stuff um, oh, okay. So yeah, there was some yeah. stuff. Yeah. So the boats were fully loaded. So we had some stuff and we had this other boat that we had been towing. So we had, <laughs> we had four people's worth of stuff. You're good on boats. We were good on boats. <laughs> I think we had a whole kitchen set up. So we were, we were good on that, but we had. That uh, wasn't planned. I don't, I just don't assume that you'd like, uh, oh, no, we're going to no. get in this boat. Let's just make sure we got a camp set up here in the boat. We're going to no, clinic in. The clinicking. It'll be right. fine. No, come on, come on now. It's just <laughs> clinicking. Right, right. Just before you go on with that, Gary, what what are your thoughts back back at the camp there when you're uh, narrating now? Uh... <laughs> oh man, it was classic. And so I got to set this up too, like Gary's first trip to the Yukon. So like, oh, it is. I oh, was yeah. getting a lot of like, Gary. Let me tell you how things happen in the Yukon. <laughs> like not not from Jeff and Rebecca, right? But mainly at like in Whitehorse, like at the base. Like there was like, oh, we got a new guy to the Yukon. Like let's right. tell him what the Yukon way is like, and you know, and people are like psyched to share, and I'm I'm just like, okay, this is great, and um, and so it had been framed to me. Well, I'll come back to this for a second. So just remember the Yukon way, but um. I, I'm on the shore narrating and I'm like talking to students through like, okay, well now they're getting it. They're going after it. They've got their bag out. I feel like, I feel like you clip to it uh, yeah. while we could still see, we could see them. Like, it's like, okay, they're chasing the canoe. It's like a sports commentary. Like, oh, mm -hmm. they've got it. They've got it. You know, and this is after, just to be clear, the swimmers are on shore. We know our people are okay. And um, it's just another teachable happened, moment they, now. They were able yeah. to get after it. And so, I see them attach the line. I'm like, oh, they're going for the shore. They're going for the shore. And then the other canoe is kind of out of sight. Like, I can't see that, but I can still see Jeff and Rebecca. And all of a sudden, I see the line and the, that, that rescue line they've attached to that 
swamp canoe just go like boing, just taunt in the water. And I just see them go backwards. Mm. Like they just get pulled out of sight in reverse and they're gone. Wow. You know, and that was it. And so the, um, the Yukon way that people talked about, it's like, now Gary, we might have to chase the canoe for a little bit. So you might not see us for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear. And I was like, okay, like, I guess this is what happens. Like, and so I just kind of, um, I kept it in the like kind of leader of the day mode and was just like, what do y'all want to do? <laughs> so what, what was your plan like so you guys are all packed up you, you aren't camped there you're not doing no. it over day you're, you're packed up in the morning you're gonna do a clinic and then paddle down well, no was, we had already paddled a few miles like we had gone okay. a, this so was you're in the middle like, of your day yeah and this was just okay. like oh this yeah. is a good spot let's stop gotcha. in clinic okay it was like a spur of the moment so you weren't at camp you didn't have a camp set mm-hmm. up nothing yeah nope. and so yeah and so I, just, I looked at the three you know, students that were leaders of the day and I was like what do you want to do like what are our priorities and they're just like oh <laughs> and um and so we ended up um I didn't I, I feel like I might they might tell a different but I, I don't think I really took charge I didn't say like all right this is what has to happen now like I, I didn't step in and go like, everything's gone to shit student leadership's <laughs> over I'm in charge right. you know and so I said well what do we have like what are our resources what are our priorities What's your plan? And so um, it was kind of yeah. epic. Like, I love it how sometimes we just carry on. It's like, yeah, this stuff happens. What What do you guys want? To, what, what should we do now? When, yeah. you're, when we're actually we're like, oh my God, I don't have no idea. Let's just let the students lead this one. Yeah. In my head, <laughs> I was like, well, I guess we'll catch up to them. Like we got to keep going. Uh-huh. So it was like, you know, how do we, they're not going to come to us. You know, I was like, the you know, river only flows one way. And so um, they ended up doing, it was pretty crazy. Like, but we like did a super raft of these canoes, like oh, yeah. strapped like all these canoes together, like ferried across this huge eddy um, to get to the other side. And then we had like a hiking team. And then we like broke the river down in different sections where we tried to paddle a little bit. Oh, so and you're I'm taking like, this on, on your own. You're like, okay, we're running this rapids and I'm showing you how to do it. Let's go. Well, and it was like trying to break down like little sections, like right. not like, all right, we're going to go, like, we're going to go like 20 yards and then we're right. going to regroup and then we're okay. going 20 yards. But, um, it was, uh, it was huge. Like, I mean, I was like running up and down the shore for like a mile and trying to like plan things out and bring the group back together. So you just lost a lot of like, just a lot of like communication time and like making sure he's on the same page and like making sure our hikers have like bear mace and like whistles and you know all that kind of stuff and um when you're scouting we broke- gary, gary when you're scouting are you thinking like just around the next corner i'm gonna see them anyway like they, they can't be much further than this are you are you thinking that the whole oh, time oh yeah <laughs> we're like oh yeah they, y'all are like 11 kilometers away or something I feel no like. way. we were we right? were far we were it was like i don't know if it was 11 but it was it was a fair distance because yeah, we was- we ran yeah. this whole section. Wow. And it was, I mean, we were probably chasing for an hour. I don't know how long it was. It oh, seemed man. like five minutes and it seemed like six hours. And we ended up like on this gravel bar island. Okay. And we got <laughs> the one boat to shore and we were like, all right, good luck, Gary. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, and I felt really like I didn't feel like panicky, you know, it's like, all right, we just got to go slow to go fast. Like we're just going to break it down in the little sections. Right. Trying to imagine you doing like lots of hand lining of boats mm-hmm. where like you have your canoes along the shore and like lining them down, passing each other. And like all that's in my head. But the reality is like there's current and these big bushes and you can't, you know, it's just super awkward. And so we, we did pretty good. We got going a little bit and there was one wave train and these students, they flip their canoe. Oh no. And so, and I'm in the front with, you know, another student paddler and um and i'm like oh my god so like you're brave man student... i can't believe you went in the front with a student paddler in the middle of this situation no no <laughs> i mean i'm in the front of oh, the, the front con- front with the first canoe the flotilla yeah. okay yeah. okay I'm, i thought you meant like you were sitting in the bow train. of the boat i'm like in the bow of a student canoe yeah and um okay and so they uh we start to get chase and we're going after it and um these students just bail like they don't even um 
like try to grab their line, you know, and swim it to shore yeah. or anything. Cause they're like, you know, it's like day 10 or something. We had eight. practiced that too. I think, I think we had practiced swimming with canoes at yeah. that point. I'm fairly and, sure. And they just, I remember one student, like he's swimming with his paddle and he gets the paddle like underneath his chin strap. And so his paddle's like, <laughs> like next to his face. Oh, and he just goes, Argh! and just rips his helmet off like <laughs> while swimming. And it was just like, they get to shore I look at the second, you know, swamp canoe and I look at my own boat and I'm way steep in water from like going down. Everybody else has stopped. Like we had this whole system where like, okay. you know, one, we were one at a time in it and so everybody else had stopped. But um, I just look at that canoe and I was like, bye-bye second canoe. No you know, way. And yeah, I couldn't get after it. Like it just didn't have, wasn't even close to getting after it, like full of water. So we pull over, dump it out spend the next like three hours like getting the students that were swam to shore to our little ledge spot where I pulled over then I'm hiking upstream getting the hiking group hiking upstream like bringing the other boats down one at a time like How, how's the weather and... are, are these swimmers well, beautiful. freezing or are they oh, yeah. it was beautiful it was yeah. sunny and beautiful okay. yeah yeah good and so we get everybody together on this rock and um we're sitting there and the students are like this one guy, I called him F bomb. I can't even remember his real name because he was just always dropping F bombs the whole time. And he was just going on and on because he was so mad because he was hiking in his wetsuit and he didn't have any pants. You know, I'm like, he wanted the shorts. And he was just like, what the fuck? This is crazy. Like, none of this makes sense. And, you know, and then, and so we're pulled over and we're still kind of in like LOD mode on a mass of students. Like, well, all right. So, How's the scoreboard looking? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> and um, what do y'all want to do? And they were all like, psyched to like keep going. It's that Navy thing, maybe that the midshipmen are like, you don't quit. And so like, no one's going to say we should stop. <laughs> no one's going to say that. And, um, and they were getting all stressed about it. And I was just kind of letting it go. And I just kept trying to ask them like, well, if this happens, like, what do you want me to do? Or like, if I'm safety, like in another canoe flip, do you want me to chase it or do you want me to stay with the group? You know, and they were just like, oh, God. And finally, this uh, student. I can't believe you're uh, still in teacher mode at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's the Yukon way. Evidently, this yeah, is all normal. Right, right. That's like, normal. This is, this is my normal. Right, right. You know, this is still my normal. And um, a student, I was awesome. The student stepped up and he just, he just said, you know, hey, we're done. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. He stepped up and he's like, we're done. Like this is and every you could see like the physical relief on everybody. Right. Like shoulders dropped, everybody relaxed. I was like, yeah, we're done. And in my mind, I was like, thank God. Like we're done. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, because I was like really close to pulling the plug, but I didn't want to because I felt like I swear somebody showed me the Navy agreement for this course and it said <laughs> like to experience decision making in a decision making in a subfatal environment. Oh, and man. so I was like, well, so I'm keeping it subfatal, you know, like all the way up to the end. <laughs> no one's dying here. Yeah. Yeah. And um and of and course so you're thinking you're gonna there. find Rebecca down the stream a few in a few minutes. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're just around the corner. You know, and me, I think I don't know how far we made it. We maybe made it like a half mile. Oh yeah. You know, it was it know, was maybe. pretty like continuous whitewater. Like yeah. you know, it was definitely like Jeff and I were trying to move as fast as we could to get to this boat. But, you know, we, we were like making moves and like paddling, you know, we weren't just goofing around. You, you had to like have some skills. Um, mm -hmm. It was, it was not the section to be clinicking upstream of apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just want to jump in. We're getting close to, to the 2.30 here, my time, Eastern time. Are you guys okay to keep going for another little bit? You mm -hmm. don't have any hard stops? Oh yeah. Good. Okay, good. Okay, great. Um, all right, so Rebecca, you're you're downstream now. It's probably getting later in the day. Are you yeah. guys setting up camp? Are you thinking about scouting up north or uh, up the river? What, what well, are you guys we had doing? gotten to this gravel bar island. It was a pretty nice camp, and uh, we had gotten the one boat ashore. So we were we had, and we were kind of like, okay, we need to stop, um, and and we'll stay here. Uh, I think it was late enough that it was like we're not going to go look for Gary right now. And we were kind of assessing. Um, and then 
we were kind of looking <laughs> upstream. I mean, we spent a lot of time looking upstream, waiting to see Gary come around the next bend. Yeah. And uh, it was like, oh shit, Jeff, is that another canoe floating down? You just and happened to was, be looking up as it was coming. Oh yeah. And wow. it was like, oh yeah, that's another canoe. And then it was a very conscious decision-making discussion of like, are we going to get this second canoe? And it, I was like, I don't think we can't, we can't go chase the second canoe because if we leave Gary any further, like he'll have, we're going to be so far downstream from him that we can't even dream of help. <laughs> yeah. So we just watched it float by. No way. We just sat there and watched it float by. See, were and, you, were you finished the rapids? Like it wasn't yeah. a flat section, but yeah. so you didn't feel that you could still get it quick enough, jump in, grab it and, and get it back or kill I mean, us. it was still fast enough current. Like, right. I mean, this is, it was pretty early season and okay. there was a fair bit of water yeah. in the river and, and things were moving and it was just sort of like, can we jump in? Right. You probably had the canoe unloaded boat. at this point. Um, I don't know. Um, but it just seemed like right. that we were leaving Gary and the entire right student course um for a piece of gear right. um yeah it is a fully loaded canoe and we do need that probably to make it the rest of the way but it was like wow for me quick decision you know, making I, you had to make or was yeah. it probably felt like slow motion at that point it was and and i was a course leader and i was like okay this is the decision i'm making like jeff we're not gonna right. go get that canoe and yeah. uh we're gonna sit here and and be here for gary and our 15 students. Right. We'll, we'll um, look for people. We won't get yeah. canoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we watched it float by. And, oh, I can't uh, imagine that feeling. Yeah. Cool. And we, I was like, well, I better make Jeff something he likes for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, when, you know, equipment breaks uh, all the time and things get lost, not all the time, but it, it does happen. And, but it's usually like a split second and a, something's gone or it gets wrapped on a rock or pinned or whatever. And it's like, boom, done. But this is like, there's thousand dollars of gear floating yeah. away. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. we'll see you in maybe in a few days. And food and a kitchen or whatever's wow. in there. You know, wow. you don't even know what's in there. Shelter pieces. pants. Yeah. Yeah, pants. <laughs> yeah. All right, Gary. So, so you're done. What's going on back up at uh, your scene? Are you starting to look for camp now or, or what are you doing? We're there. Yeah. Like, and that was because that was kind of the spot where I'd gotten a group together. It was this nice, like, it's super thick, brushy, but it was nice, wedgy. Mm -hmm. Like, there was enough flat spots okay. for everybody. And so, again, like, in the back of my mind, like, that's where we were staying that night. I just, wasn't telling them that yet until they, you know, the students were like, we're done. And I was like, Hey, look right here. The group kind of came together and uh, did a great job. Like uh, I gave somebody my sleeping bag. Somebody gave me a tent fly, you know, people like shared food and like shared resources and just kind of made sure everybody was like dry, had a place to sleep. And, um, yeah, we just kind of hung out. I remember this one student. Um, was this an all male course? Did you say that? It was actually. It was happened it? to be. Yeah. I can't remember. You yeah. can't remember that you were the only female on this trip. <laughs> you no, know, there was. There was another. There was a. I think there was a girl, wasn't there? Uh. -uh. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. All right. I mean, I only say that with such confidence because I've got the photo. Oh, okay. But uh, uh, yeah, just a group photo. But the um, well, it's funny is the. I, just, I can't remember his name now, but um, we just ended up chatting for everybody to fire. And I was just sitting there and I was like, he had just gotten done reading Atlas Shrugged. And um, I was Very like, what's book. that book about? You know, and basically he just narrated the whole book back to me. No that was kind of like how we spent the evening. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was, it was pretty chill. And so, so it was like, is that awesome? Like, you know, once you find that spot where, you know, you've made the right decision. Like everybody mm -hmm. just relaxed and yeah. like these problems that were so like people that were having to sleep in their wetsuits, like didn't care or like borrowed clothes from somebody else, but mm -hmm. everything just got a little bit easier. And we were in like a good holding pattern. And we, we were happy not to be losing any more canoes. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. So you both bunker down for the night. What's uh, what's the next day bring you? Well, well, Jeff and I 
decided we would go try and work our way back upstream and see if we could find Gary and all our students. Um, so we just started working our way back upstream. I think we got up pretty early and. Um, Are you lining a canoe upstream now? Cause you're on an Island. Yeah. So you're, not, you're not, you're not running up the side of the shore or the, the river. No, one. we kind of worked our way trying to paddle through the eddies and line okay. up as we could and ferry back and forth. And, uh, and we left the one canoe on the Island. Um, right. and we worried about the other canoe downstream and, uh, but we went, we started working our way to get, get back to Gary in the course. Yeah. And, and I think like the, it's funny, this is one of Jeff's photos behind me, but it's like, I think it's Rebecca, like setting the line to pull Jeff across the current or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I think that's so awesome. But uh, it's a, I can't remember if we had started traveling yet or if we were still just sitting around camp, like drinking coffee when, when y'all found us. Oh, yeah. You had started traveling. I feel like, okay, I feel like we had, maybe we hadn't gotten far, but like we were like, you know, hyper, like, okay, how many <laughs> canoes can we keep today? And like <laughs> just trying to like still like do these little bites and little sections. Like, and again, it was kind of stressful because like, canoes are unwieldy for novice paddlers a yeah. and then b like are you putting four people in a canoe <laughs> with, you know that's already loaded with gear it's oh, so, like man. we had people like laying belly flat on barrels in the middle <laughs> like jumping across little sections and it was like the chicken the fox and the rice like how do you get everything across oh, the man. river and then we had like people like shaking trees like yelling for grizzly bears and like trying to get along the edges. And, and so it was just like, not fast. Like everything we were doing was not fast. <laughs> and, um, and so I think we, maybe we had to travel a little bit. And then all of a sudden everybody's like, ah! I mean, you would have thought like a helicopter had landed when we saw Jeff and Rebecca. Yeah. It was awesome. What was that feeling like Rebecca when you first saw them? I think just relief. I mean, I had a lot of confidence in Gary that he would keep this all together. And, um, he was probably the perfect man for the job, um, <laughs> but it was nice to to get everybody back together and then figure out what the next step was. It was, it was sort of yeah, like we still had to do some more of that shimmy shake to like get down. We had more people in boats. Yeah. yeah. Is your boat empty, Rebecca, or did you packed it up when you uh, wow. decided to go check? Or did you leave stuff on the island? I think we left stuff. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what we did but we probably left stuff just because we were traveling upstream right all right so what yeah. happened then where, where were you out of the clear then or were you like okay we still got a ways to go here oh we still had tons of white water to go <laughs> yeah um and i at some point i decided i should call the branch and tell them you know that we had lost a boat and uh that if someone called for mayo where the where the pickup was and they found her boat, like we're still alive and right. we're doing fine. Um, but this may happen. And I talked to Dave Pickett, who's a good friend and he just laughed. He's like, what are you <laughs> doing out there? <laughs> but I was like, I better, oh, I better fess up to this early on right. so that they're not worried about me, you know, sort of telling sure. your, telling your mom, yep. you're going to be late right. or something B before like that. Before you got the call from someone else. Yeah. But then, oh, I mean, we started moving and the, I mean, the students did really well with sort of figuring out like who had what and how are we going to reconfigure cook groups? And, um, and then I think we paddled one more day and we actually found the other boat no like, way. in pretty good shape. I think the only thing we ended up losing was a, was a tent pole, like a, a knuck tuck pole or a okay. mega mid pole. Yeah. No way. So yeah. what was, what condition was it? Was it washed up on the shore? Was it pinned on a rock? Was it just it was, uh, bobbing along? Trees. Yeah. Like, and some, you know, some. You guys must have been so excited to find that. Oh, it was, oh yeah. It was awesome. I'm going to do this real quick. Uh, you get another photo? Yeah, I think so. All right. How long yeah. after did you find it? Was it like the next day or was it days later? I think it was a day or two at the most. Like it okay. wasn't long. Yeah. It wasn't long. Wow. And so did you, uh, there, there you go. That, that's the boat. Yeah. That's the boat. 
for those that are listening, Gary's got the, the virtual background of uh, pictures from the trip going here. So we'll have to put some video clips up of this. That's great. They seem yeah. pretty excited. Well, all credit to Jeff for documenting. But um, yeah, it was so crazy. I remember, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like the trip that just, it kept, you know, it still stayed at that high level. Cause even when Jeff and Rebecca found us, so I remember, I feel like part of my brain just shut down. I was like, my people are here. <laughs> ah, like martini cigarette mode, like I'm done. And, um, but it was, you know, we still had to like, put, people are still like on their belly, laying across some blue barrels, like paddling right. across stuff and moving gear and people around boats. And then we got to the island. And then the next day we found the second canoe and the second canoe was far. It was far it away. Was far. Yeah. It was far. It had traveled for quite the journey. And um, the student that had ripped off its helmet, like that had, was gone. And I remember that being like a thing, like, well, or against, you know, practice is like, you have to have a helmet. Like, we don't have a helmet. Like, somehow I just remember having that conversation at some point. And um, sure enough, like the next day or the next half hour, you know, on the side of the undercut bank, somebody sees this little glint of light and it's, this purple protect helmet. No way. So it, you know, I think we had pretty much a full recovery. Wow. Lucky. So all lucky. of a sudden, yeah. like when you finish this course, like the branch is like really concerned, then you come back and you're an all-star. You just, you just set them up, right? I don't know if we were all-star. We had a good <laughs> course. We had a good course. You the students were the happy. Yeah. The students were happy. Right on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and then we got, like, once it flattened out, we were still even able to do the student expedition part of it where they kind of travel in front of us. And that's where we got to build our super raft. Uh, yeah. Popcorn. yeah. Yeah, we, we had a full course for sure. Um, and that's, it, it was good for the midshipmen because they definitely feel like, oh, we're, the, we're rock stars. We're so right. smart. You know, we're going to be jet pilots. Um, and uh, there was definitely some non-fatal uh, situations <laughs> right. that were, were interesting. Some humbling moments. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Do you remember the end of the course, what they were like, what they were talking about? They were just pretty psyched to, to make it through. Yeah. They were stoked. Yeah. The, the stoke was high. It was much celebrating. It felt like they'd really done something. And then, you know, it was, uh, yeah, I think it's like good course outcomes for sure. Um, yeah, it's so funny because I was like, I feel like forever. I was like, you mean this doesn't happen all the time? Like that was <laughs> definitely like part of my mindset. I was like, oh, they said they said they'd be gone a long time. That's you right. know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I guess overnight, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. we got food. You know, yeah, it was funny. Yeah, that's amazing yeah. how. You just get into go mode and, and you rally. And, and it sounds like you guys both did a, an incredible job of that, of collecting everybody and keeping everybody safe. You know, so much about these situations is like, let's not make it worse. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's a bad situation, it, but let's not make it worse. I think that was a lesson for me. Like, I definitely felt like my heart broke a little bit when that second canoe took off. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, like, oh man. Mm -hmm. Like I was definitely like, would have been super psyched to like keep everybody together and still like just easing our way so slowly downstream. But yeah. Yeah. I I know, you, you, wanted, like, you wanted to pull into that Island where Rebecca was in style and everybody kicked back, everybody doing oh, tight yeah, eddy totally. turns, ferries. Like super raft just floats right. around the corner. I got this guy. Don't worry. That'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It sounds yeah. like a really challenging, obviously challenging situation that, yeah, it didn't get it didn't get worse, and uh, every, you know everybody's safe, and it's just gear, and uh, gear can be replaced or it can be found. Right. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I had a great course. Like that was. Yeah. Uh, we were saying earlier that was one of my like, like for me, I never worked a ton for Noel. Like I worked for a period of time, but I'd only do like one or two courses a year. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like versus like Rebecca or other people who work a lot, like, you know, like I don't have a lot of. The chat, there's very few chapters in my old book. And so this being my last one, like, right. I definitely, um, yeah, I love it. Like, it was just a great experience. And it's super fun working with Jeff and Rebecca, of course. Like, it was lots of laughter. And uh, yes, yeah. And just, it was a great trip for me.
Yeah, me too. Yeah. How many years after, Rebecca, did you continue doing field courses? What year was that, Gary? I don't even know. I don't know. I'm gonna say 2010, maybe. Okay. Yeah, right. maybe I worked. I worked till 2012. Yeah. So I worked from I took my IC in 2001 and then worked yeah. pretty much full time till 2012. Wow, that is how many weeks? Do you remember? 231, I think. Yeah. Wow, so. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of time in the field. Wow. Well, guys, that was awesome. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing those stories. Um, I think we'll, I think we'll end it there, Gary, and we'll probably get you on for another one later. Uh, uh, no worries. This was yeah. great. I was yeah. really excited to share the story with Rebecca and then to tell it. Yeah, no, it's really neat having, uh, having two people on, especially when this story had, you know, you guys were separated. So there's two stories within the story, you know, it's, yeah. uh, um, and you know, sometimes that happens and there's two instructors that go through the whole experience together and have different thoughts and patterns, but obviously you guys were separated. So you did have two different experiences going yeah. through this. So yeah, well, it's neat to hear it. It's such a, I mean, Knowles is a team sport. I think we don't think of it that way, but as an instructor team, like if you have a well-functioning instructor team, it's, you know, it's makes it so fun and easy. And uh, I think we had a good team on that course and we're able to, to make it through some, some challenging things. Right on. All right. Before we wrap up, I'm going to go through my rapid fire questions. I like to ask all uh, our instructors before we end up for the day. And uh, yeah, we'll just do one at a time. You can both answer them. Maybe Gary, you can go first on this one. What's okay. your favorite location to lead trips? Ooh, uh, I think the Yukon. Right. <laughs> it's a pretty special place, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. yeah right. Same for me. Rebecca, Yukon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, UConn? Absolutely. Right on. All right, Rebecca, you can take this one. What's your favorite piece of gear? My canoe paddle. Uh, have you had one for a while or <clears throat> do you have um, several? Yeah, I've, yeah, I have had it for a while. And so nice. it's, a, it's a nice wood one. So I remember I made a canoe paddle once when I was a kid, I think in Scouts, and it was my favorite canoe paddle. We spent all winter making it. And then like the second trip, I went to like splash another kid and I hit it on the gunnels and the thing fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> I think my grandfather put it back together and we hung it on the wall or something. Nice favorite paddle. All right. Uh, what's your favorite piece of gear, Gary? Um, I think for me, it's like, I like my PSD, like my yeah. rescue PSD. Cause like, it's just got all my stuff in it. Right. You know, like the big pocket and all the, the knickknacks and bricker brac that goes in there, usually snacks. All right. Lots usually of snacks. Nice. Yeah. Right on. It keeps you nice and warm too. All right, Rebecca, best, or Gary, you take this one first. Best backcountry costume you've seen or that you use or have used? This is kind of after Knowles, but I did some commercial guiding for a while. And sure. uh, the costume there is like pretty elevated, but I bought this shirt. Um, it's like a bowling shirt. It's made nice. out of this material called disconium. Oh. And so it's basically like if you had take a disco ball and made it into fabric. No, <laughs> well, that's that's kind wow. of been my favorite like go to. Nice, yeah, and also it's, it's not it's not like super hard to deal with. You know, sometimes the right. costumes get kind of intensive, a little big and bulky. Roll yeah. it up, shove it in the bag. Mm -hmm. Right on. How about you, Rebecca? Best uh, costume. The best costume I've ever seen was on my instructor course with a gentleman named Stobeam, um, and he was primary color boy, and he had all the <laughs> primary colors clothing on the outside and then he had various layers where he could be like yellow and blue make green and then he would pull oh up and get this green what? layer and and like red and blue make purple and he would have this purple layer and it was <laughs> it was so creative i was just like i was blown away i, I can't think of anything that tops primary but this color is something boy. he came up with this wasn't like oh, a yeah. primary color dress that he bought at the store no okay. he totally <laughs> had it in his wow he made it Wow. It was crazy. Uh, uh, that's pretty unique. I haven't heard that one before. All right, Rebecca, what image comes to mind when you hear the word adventure? Oh, geez. Um, I think just that, that could be enough. That could be your answer right there. Yeah. I think <laughs> just standing like scouting something like yeah. a, a big rapid where you're just like, okay, I'm going to figure this out. And then I'm, I'm going to go and drop into it. And hopefully my plan is, good enough and hopefully i can react to what 
what happens and and just that sense of when you pull out of the eddy here you go right right on how about you gary what do you hear what do you envision when you hear the word adventure i think like a really bad map Uh ah yeah because i feel like uh for me like a lot of one thing i loved about the yukon or like big trips and that kind of thing is just like when you don't know what's around the corner like when you don't have so much beta versus like I feel on um, some course types, it's easy to be like, well, on Wednesday, we always camp here, right. you know, or on like day four, we always do this, you know, and it's, and so I really love to like, just go into places where it's like, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, you know, like, I don't know what it looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Right that on. was our course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had a great yeah. time. That was yeah. the best course ever. Uh, all right, last question. Actually, I might ask a bonus question this week. Uh, Who's taking this one? I think Rebecca. If you could, or no, Gary, if you could go back to any one location, you've shared a hot drink in the field, where would that location be? One spot. I think just for this story, I would go there right now and stay on our little raft, floating yeah. down the half, like having some popcorn and a hot drink. Nice. Um, I think I, I would go into Desolation Canyon in Utah because I've just had so many hot drinks there <laughs> that it's, um, and you know, I've been to the like, Day four, we camp here so many times um, that it just feels like one of those places that's kind of home for me, even mm. though I haven't been there in a while. Um, right. It'd be nice to, you know, sit on that first day. You kind of get in the canyon and sit mm. and, and be back there. Yeah. Right on. Okay, I'm going to throw a bonus question at you. I had some feedback this week that said uh, suggested we add this question to the rapid fire. And, and you may not have an answer for it. If you don't, that's fine. Um, one came to mind when someone asked this question, but uh, do you have any quotes that you remember from a student? Oof. I'll I'll tell you mine as you think. Okay, Gary, you got one? I got one. It's, okay. it's more of a, I'm going to say they were like, the students all thought uh, Jeff on our trip was like a superhuman person. Like <laughs> Jeff was just big, competent. Like he didn't wear bug spray or, now they make tell he would just gently wrap this like little shawl or like a little white towel around him and then just like will the mosquitoes to like respect his face. And um and so the students were kind of freaked out by that. They were like, that's just incredible. And then Jeff's really big and and you know, really talented instructor. And so the students just kind of picked up on that and they kind of started to like build up this Jeff myth. And then the quote I remember is the student going, like, oh my God, he ate it. And what had happened was that Jeff was sitting there. With this little shawl wrapped around, like being one with the mosquitoes, and um, they were kind of getting near his face, and he like coughed, or like Rebecca said something funny, and he laughed, or anyway, he just inhaled and he like sucked this mosquito in. But to the students on the other side of the conversation, they just saw Jeff like open his mouth and eat a mosquito. They got too close <laughs> to him, and, um, and so nice. I remember that for sure. Nice, that's a good one. Yeah, Rebecca, anything come to mind for you? Oh, geez. Not immediately. I'm right. sure I'll think of some answer about an I'll, hour from I'll, now. I'll, I'll be like, oh. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll share one because the first time we've asked the question and, and it is a ra- it is a river story. Um, and this is a long, the river story is long. It'll get into someday, but we were on the, on the Yukon river as well, which the has dumps into, but we were in Alaska on this one on a, on a new and one and only course river trip for Knowles, Alaska. <laughs> they never did it after we did this one. <laughs> and um, we were on a tributary to the Yukon and then eventually out the Yukon for a couple of days. But where this tributary came out to the Yukon, it was about, I don't know, say maybe like four or five miles from the Arctic Circle, where the Arctic Circle touches the river, a river bend on the map. We can just see it. And so we asked them like, you know, a couple of days before this, we see this potential of like, once we get to the Yukon, we could go upstream for a day, maybe two and touch the Arctic Circle. Like, but they're not going to be into this. Like, this was an epic trip. We'd had a bunch of stuff go on already. All our, we had a, a bears eat our tents, and we found a missile in the mountains. And this was, this is up at north of Fairbanks, just um, close to the Arctic Circle, obviously. And so, we're like, and of course, Travis Holmes. You probably know Travis. He uh, he puts it up to the students. He's like, do you guys want to go upstream for two days and touch the Arctic Circle? And they're like, yeah, of course we do. <laughs> it's like, really? They did that? Anyway, there's one one student that was pretty pessimistic most of the trip. And, you know, he kind of stuck out a little bit. It was probably a little out of his element. And of course, that day, we're going to do the paddling upstream and lining and paddling and lining. It's on the Yukon, which is, you know, probably a mile 
almost a, at least a half a mile wide at this point. Um, he says, and of course, he's the leader of the day that day. He just happened to be the leader of the day we're paddling upstream. And so he starts off the morning with our little briefing for the day. And he's like, are you guys ready for this? Because today is going to suck. Right. <laughs> we've just been like, we've been, well, we've been, you know, pushing positivity for weeks on this guy and everything. We're like, oh, man. <laughs> anyway, that, that's the quote that sticks out in my head after all these years. But guys, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, I've had a lot of fun chatting with you guys. Maybe share where people want to get a hold of you. I know sometimes we're promoting businesses here. You guys don't have other businesses going on right now to promote, which is fine. But if uh, if people want to get in touch with you and ask you more questions about the Hess, uh, you want to share where to find you or, or can they track it down on their own? Gary? I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll definitely promote that. Uh, so I work for the University of Idaho. Right. And we have a station or a campus in McCall, Idaho that we run a one-year master's degree program. So we're always looking for good students. So if anybody's interested in a yeah. master's degree in science communication and environmental education, uh, get a hold of me at the University of Idaho McCall Outdoor Science School. Awesome. Great. Rebecca? Okay. I got, I got nothing. You got nothing. All right. Yeah. Rebecca's a busy, busy ER doctor in Virginia. And uh, I, I appreciate all the work you do. And guys, again, it's been a real pleasure. It's been fun. I think we'll have to get more of these instructor teams on because uh, I think the energy level ramps up and uh, the stories get bigger and bolder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Thanks yeah. for the opportunity, Sean. And Rebecca, it's so good to see you. Thanks for all your hard work and the yeah in our healthcare system. 